You may be seated. <laughs> All right. Well, it is great. It is awesome. It is wonderful. It is exciting to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Oh, come on. Let's go. It is exciting to be here this morning. Amen. Amen. There we go. All right. Holiday weekend. We get to blow things up. We get to spend time with family, grilling food, spending time on the water and hanging out. Um, but I would like to take, before we get into God's word, just a moment to honor those men and women um, who have served our great country. And so if you have served this country in the past or currently, would you please just raise your hand? There we go. Thank you. Thank you. We are blessed, and I truly believe that we live in one of the greatest countries in the world. And uh, we are blessed to live in a country where we still have the freedom to openly acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and to meet in a place like this with other believers, and to worship and fellowship. And so just uh, praise God for that. And I don't know what the future holds. I don't know what the future looks like. Uh, but what I do know is that if we do lose freedoms in this country, I do know that God's spirit is alive and well. And I do know that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And so we can rest in that. Amen. Amen. All right. So why did everybody stand? Why did everybody stand? That was interesting. So I will say this. You all did much better than the first service. <laughs> and following the instructions that were on the screen to stand, you, you stood because that's what the screen said. It said to please stand. And so that is what we are going to talk about here this morning, about standing firm on the word of God and following the instructions that are found within it. And you know, in life, we follow instructions all the time, right? Every single day, whether we know it or not, we are constantly following instructions. When we go to the gas pump, right? We go to the gas pump to fill up and there's a set of instructions to follow. Insert your card, select the grade, begin fueling. Would you like a receipt? Activate the tears because of the price that you just paid. <laughs> there's instructions. When we cook something, we go to the pantry, we, we, we pull out a box of food and we flip the box over to look at the instructions to see how to properly cook the food. Men, our wives give us instructions daily that we follow very, very obediently. Amen? I see some head shaking no out there. Are there any Lego fans in here? Any Lego fans? I see some hands up, and I do want to acknowledge that our youth, our students are in here this morning. And so, I mean, when it comes to Lego, they have some crazy instructions to follow. This is one set, but look how many instruction books it comes with. There's five. Five instruction books with this. And in these instructions, uh, there are so many details that you have to get right. And this one alone, there's 99 uh, steps. And then when you look in the back, it has all the little tiny pieces. And you hope that you don't lose any of them because every little piece when it comes to completing your Lego build is very important. And we found this out, my son and I, we were working on a Star Wars jet thing. I'm not a Star Wars guy, but it's like a, a flying thing, you know. And you put this little Lego man in the turret and the turret is supposed to spin all the way around so he can fight the Lego princesses that my daughter has. And... <laughs> It wasn't functioning properly. And my son brought me the, the, the build and he said, Dad, I don't know what's going on. So we went back to the instruction book and we started working backwards. And what we found was there's a little tiny one by two piece that was left out. It's one of the smallest Lego pieces that you can, you can have, the ones that really hurt in the middle of the night. And, <laughs> We, we worked backwards and we found out that that piece was left out, so we put that on, put everything back, and the Lego man was able to spin completely around in the turret. 
Every little piece is important, and instructions are important. Amen? There's another set of instructions that I want to share with you, and it's actually probably the most important set of instructions, and that is the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E, our basic instructions before leaving earth. And they are very, very important. And everything that is in this book, in this set of instructions, is in here for a reason. But it is so easy for us sometimes to just want to skip over parts, right? Well, I don't like what that says. Let's just move on, right? And there are times maybe we're, we're, we're saying, hey, you know, I don't even need to pick up the instructions. Is there anybody who does that in here? Like you get something, you open up the box, you take the instructions out, you throw them away, and then you just save the box. And then you, you, you set the box there and you go back and you look at it again and like, hey, hand me that box again. Okay, this is what we're doing. Anybody do that? Oh, come on. I know somebody in here does that. I see men. I see wives pointing at their husbands. You do that. We do, I do that. I do that. But listen, it is very important when we're reading instructions to do what the instructions tell us to do. But it's even more important to do what these instructions say to do and to not leave anything out. And so this morning, we are going to go back to the beginning. We are going to open up, if you haven't already, to Genesis chapter 6. Open your Bibles or your phones. And we are going to see here that the Lord is looking at us. He's looking at his creation. And what we see starting here in verse 5 is that the Lord says... He's observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth. And he saw that everything that they thought, everything that they imagined was consistently and it was totally evil. So the Lord was sorry that he had ever made them and put them on the earth. Scripture says it broke his heart. And the Lord said, I will wipe away this human race I've created from the face of the earth. Yes, I will destroy every living thing, all the people, the large animals, the small animals, everything that scurry along the ground, even the birds in the sky. I am sorry I ever created them. I think that God's upset here. Wouldn't you agree? God is very upset, but then we see in verse 8 that something happened. He found favor in someone. Verse 8 says that he found favor with Noah. And this is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man. He was the only blameless person living on the earth at the time, and he walked in close fellowship with God. Noah was the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And I just want to take this moment to introduce my, my family over here. There's Jessica, my wife, and my son, Riley, and my son, Roger, and my two daughters, uh, Ruby and Reba, are uh, with the kids right now. But I'm telling you, if we have another kid, I want to give my wife, Jessica, a J-letter child. And Japheth it is. <laughs> I think Japheth is a cool name. Does anybody in here know Japheth? See? It's a cool name. It's a great name, Japheth. Little, little baby Japheth Harris. So starting back in verse 11. Now God saw that the earth had become corrupt, that it was filled with violence, and God observed all this corruption in the world, for everyone on the earth was corrupt. And so God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all the living creatures for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. And so God does something here, and he gives Noah a very detailed set of instructions. He says, build a large boat. And he, he doesn't say build it from any wood. He says, build it from cypress wood, waterproof it with tar inside and out, Construct decks and stalls throughout the interior. Make the boat 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, 45 feet high, and then leave an 18-inch opening below the roof all the way around the boat. 
put the door on the side and build three decks on the boat, lower, middle, and upper. And then he says, look, I am about to cover the whole earth with a flood that will destroy every living thing that breathes. Everything on earth will die, but I will confirm my covenant with you. So enter the boat, you and your wife and your sons and their wives, Bring a pair of every kind of animal, a male and a female, into the boat with you to keep them alive during the flood. Pairs of every kind of bird, every kind of animal, and every kind of small animal that scurries along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. He goes on and says, to make sure that there's enough food for you and your family and all the animals. And verse 22 says, as we finish out this reading, that Noah did everything. Noah did everything. Say that with me. Noah did everything just as the Lord had commanded him. All right, so... Church, one of the first things that we notice in our passage here this morning in verses 5 and 6 is that we see something here. We see that God is watching us. How does that make you feel right now? How does that make you feel? God is watching us. He sees what we're doing. He sees everything that we do. And not only does he see all of those things that we do as individuals, but he sees what we are doing as a whole. He sees what we're doing as his creation. He sees what we are doing as a world. And what we know and what we see is that God cares deeply for us. And he cares more than I think that we realize how this world is responding to his truth. He cares very deeply how this world is responding to his message of hope. Did you know that there's hope found in Jesus? And more importantly, he cares how the world is responding to his son, Jesus Christ. So why is this important, church? Well, it's important because there are those people who have this idea that we can live our Christian lives to ourselves and just kind of sit back and watch the rest of the world go on by themselves, doing their own thing, while there are others that are on their way to hell. And as long as we take care of ourselves and we do our own thing, it's going to be okay. But listen, we need to be concerned about our nation. We need to be praying for our nation. Amen? Amen. We need to be praying for our world. And we need to be praying for those people who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And let me just say this. This is the good news. God is still on the throne. God is still on the throne. And we need to remember that we need to rely on the promises of God and not on the promises of man. And we need to be the light that God has called us to be. We need to have influence. And as Christians, we have been given a set of instructions. And those set of instructions that we have been given say to go. We are all commissioned by Jesus Christ himself to go out into the world and to make an impact, to make a difference in our world. And if the last couple of years have shown us anything, it's that our calling goes outside the four walls of this building. Amen. Our calling goes outside the four walls of our homes. Listen, let's not ever forget whose we are. We belong to Jesus. We belong to the creator of the universe. And what God has instructed us to do is to go. Go. To go out and share the same hope that we have. Who in here has found hope in Jesus Christ? All right, look at that. Why would we want to keep that to ourselves? There are people right now who need to hear that. They need to hear that there's hope. So this morning, let's look at Noah. Noah was a man who made a huge difference. In fact, he may have saved all of humankind simply because of his faithfulness in God. So let's take a look again at verses 5 and 6. 
We see here that the Lord is looking down. He sees the extent of the human ways and the wickedness. And he saw that everything that people were thinking and doing, he's like, man, this is totally evil. I'm tired of it. I'm sorry that I ever made them. Why did I do this? And the scripture says that it broke his heart. God's heart was broken. Let me ask, does this sound familiar to us? as we look around the world today. Listen, there is a push to legalize drugs in every corner of this country, to make it acceptable. Now we know that marijuana has been legalized in several states, but did you know that just a couple years ago, heroin, meth, um, cocaine, and other drugs have been made legal to use for personal use. It's no longer a criminal offense in the state of Oregon, and there are several other states that are ready to follow suit. That's messed up. There's a push which was on full display just over a week ago to legalize the murder of unborn children up to the day of birth. Hollywood has made the LGBTQ lifestyle commonplace by putting a character on almost every TV show and movie. Why? Because they want us to accept this lifestyle as normal and acceptable. Sexual immorality has spread like wildfire. Premarital sex, extramarital sex, pornography in the palm of the hand, you name it, it's out there. And I believe that God's heart is grieved, is yours. Now, I could go on and on this morning, but I hope that you get the point. And listen, I know that these things make us feel uncomfortable to talk about, but this is the world that we're living in. And I believe that the world that we are living in today isn't much different from Noah's time. And I believe that God's heart is grieved because of what sin is doing to our country, what sin is doing to our communities, what sin is doing to our families. And here's the deal. As Christians, listen up, as Christians, we cannot let the corruption of our world destroy our families and destroy our values. Thank you. We can't. We, we, we can't go and put blinders on and pretend that everything is all peaches and cream. When I was out in Kansas, I managed a hunting outfit. And what we would do is we would raise these birds from day-old chicks all the way till the day that we put them out into the field for our hunters. And they would have blinders on for their whole life. But also, they had the best food, they had the best water, they had the best shelter. They had protection all the way around these flight pens because we didn't want predators digging underneath and getting in there and eating them because we wanted our hunters to be able to do that. (laughs) And listen, these birds had blinders on their whole life up until the day that we put them out in the fields to be shot. They didn't know any better, though. But what my point is, is that we cannot, as a country, as a people, as believers in Christ, put blinders on and pretend like everything's fine. We need to look at what's going on around this world. And more importantly, what we need to do, church, is we need to examine our own hearts. We need to examine our minds and we need to see if there's anything that's being allowed in in our own way of thinking that would be displeasing to God. So the question that I have for you this morning, what is creating a disconnect between you and your father? And check it out. If there's anything that you can think of, we've been given a set of instructions And those instructions tell us exactly what we are to do. We are to repent and turn away from those things. And listen, if we do that, God will be pleased with us. And here's the best part, church. God will forgive us because he is a loving God. He's a caring God. He's a God that's full of mercy and grace. 
We see here in verse 7 that God does something. He, he makes a decision. He says, I'm going to wipe the human race that I've created from the face of the earth. Yes, I'm going to, I'm going to destroy everything. I'm going to destroy every living thing, all the people, all the large animals, all the small animals, all of the pheasants. I, they're gone. Everything that I've made, I am so sorry that I've ever made them. Can I tell you something? Is that all right? Or do you want me to stop talking? <laughs> Everybody's like, no, man. Like, he needs to stop. God hates sin. And God will judge sin every single time. Don't make a mistake. He hates it. So listen this morning. If you are living a sinful lifestyle, the instructions that we are given is to repent and turn away from that sin and ask God for forgiveness because, listen, God doesn't change. Did you know that? The same God that they served thousands of years ago is the same God that we serve today. He does not change. Can I tell you something else that doesn't change? The instructions that we've been given. God's word doesn't ever change, okay? And I say this because God's not going to decide one day. He's not going to wake up and decide, hey, you know what? The sin that you're living in, all of a sudden, it's okay. He's not going to do that. He's not going to become politically correct to avoid hurting your feelings. He's not going to do it. He is holy, and he wants his people, he wants us his people to live holy lives. Scripture says that the wage of sin is death. Sin always brings judgment. And in this case, God's like, hey, I want to wipe out all of creation. He's sitting there looking down at what's going uh, on, all the evil that's taking place, the corruption. He sees it. He says, that's it. I've had enough. But thank goodness Thank goodness for verse 8, which says, Noah found favor with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Noah. Check it out. Without that verse, we might not have anything else in here to read because there would be nobody to write it or to read it. One man made a difference for all of eternity. One man because he followed the instructions of God. God said, do this. Noah said, okay. He had faith in God. He trusted God. He was obedient to God. He completely surrendered himself to God. And that is what God is asking us to do. To be obedient, to trust him. Verse 9 says that Noah was a righteous man. He was the only blameless person living on earth at the time. And I love how it says that he walked in close fellowship with God. Now listen, I read this verse over and over and over. And in reading this verse, I, I thought, you know what? For a guy to save the whole world from destruction, I, I was thinking maybe there would be something more to what I kept reading. You, do you want to hear? You want to you hear what I didn't find in this verse? No special, no special gifts were mentioned. There was no theology degree mentioned, no engineer's degree mentioned. It didn't say anything about how smart or how talented he may have been. And it's amazing because when I kept reading that verse over and over and over again, what kept coming to me was that this could have been anybody. This could have been any one of us, anyone who was willing to follow God's instructions and obey what God wanted for their life. Verse 9 tells us that Noah was this person. That Noah was righteous and just like us. You know what? That doesn't mean that he was perfect and that he never made any mistakes and that he never sinned. Because I know that when he was slamming the hammer and building the ark, he smashed his finger. And men, you know what I'm talking about. What it means, though, is that he kept his heart in tune with God. He stayed connected to his father because he knew that that is what he needed. And when he did make a wrong choice, when he did make a mistake, you know what he did? He asked God for forgiveness. 
He sought reconciliation with his father, and the Bible says that he walked with God. So let me ask you this morning, how's your walk with God? Are you walking with God? Or let me ask you this, are you running from God? Are you disconnected from God? Did you know that we can walk with God the same way that Noah did? Amen. We actually have a better deal than Noah did because we have the Holy Spirit to help us. We have the Holy Spirit within us to lead us, to guide us, to teach us how to walk with God, to keep us connected to God. We can actually stay in step with God. We don't have to live in this gray area. We can actually stay close enough to God that we know we are exactly where we're supposed to be, no question. Now listen, that doesn't mean that we've got all the details figured out, but we know that we are in the will of God and that if we are in the will of God, you know what he's going to do? In our obedience, he is going to continue to reveal his plan to us. But you know what that might take? Might take something that a lot of us struggle with, patience. It takes patience. It takes surrendering ourselves to him and being obedient to him. So how many of us right now go through most of our days wondering if we're okay with God or not? Like, I don't know if I'm good with God, Roger. How many of us feel like we are on the outside looking in when it comes to having a true fellowship with God? How many of us this morning want to walk with God every single day? All right, half of you. <laughs> now, I know it's not half because what I believe is that we all want that. I believe that as his creation, that we want to know him. I believe that we all want to be in a great relationship with him. But do you know what our problem is and stands in the way and stunts that relationship that we have with God? Do you know what it is? Sin. Sin is the problem. Sin is what separates us from God. Sin is what distorts our view of God. And sin is what disrupts our walk with God. Now, we can, we, we can try to come up with all sorts of different names for it, but sin is the issue, and sin is what God hates. So let's look at what Noah did. What did he do? Well, it says that he did just as God instructed. And you know what we call that? Obedience. Look at verse 15. God says, listen up, Noah. Here's what I want you to do. I've, I've got a job for you. I want you to build a boat. And it's going to be a big boat. I want it to be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, 45 feet high. This thing is massive. Has anyone been to the ark? It is huge. The ark is ginormous, and these pictures don't do it justice right here. We, we got a chance to go out there a couple years ago, and it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. That's the side. There's the front. This thing was big. Now, now, let's just think through this for a moment, okay? What Noah did here was absolutely amazing. This was no small thing. God was asking to do something that was truly crazy, from a human point of view. And, and let me ask you, has God ever asked you to do something truly crazy? Yeah. He has me all the time. God wanted Noah to build an ark, a huge boat, but not only that, Noah was to build this boat in a place that had never seen rain. So can you imagine what the town people were saying about Noah? Noah. Now, now, seriously, think about this for a moment. We know that these people were evil. God was getting ready to destroy them. So can you, can you imagine the ridicule, the laughter, the taunting that Noah had to endure along with his family for 75 years while he carried out this job that God asked him to do? And let me ask you, what has God asked you to do this morning? that you think is too hard. Maybe God has laid something on your heart. He's been speaking to you for a while. He's saying, come on, I need you to do this. 
And in your mind, you're saying, no, I can't. That's too hard. That's too big of a task. Or maybe you're saying, hey, you know what? I hear you, God, but I just don't have the time for that. I've got this going on and I've got this going on. I don't have the patience for it. I can't wait that long. Listen, God will not give you something to do that he won't give you the power to accomplish. He will equip you to do everything that he has called you to do. So don't you think, as we look at Noah here this morning, that there were some mornings that Noah woke up and he said, what am I doing? What in the world am I doing? I'm building a boat. He had to have thought that. And and listen, we are humans. And so there are times that we are going to doubt. It's normal. Has anyone ever doubted what God was doing in their life? Okay. But what set Noah apart was that even though he had doubts, he followed God's instructions from the first step all the way to the last step. He did exactly what God had told him to do. Now, I'm sure that there was moments that, you know, Noah went to God and he's like, God, can you just please send me an email confirmation number to make sure that this is what you ordered? God, come on, what are you doing here? This is a huge project. Even if I finish this and accomplish this task that you've given me, how do you expect me to catch all of these animals? I can't even catch my own cats. Can you imagine the conversations that went on between Noah and God? And maybe you've had these conversations with God. God, I hear you loud and clear. There's no doubt that this is you speaking to me. But what about this and what about that? God, I know that you're asking me to do that, but listen, I am not the right person for the job. There is someone else that's better equipped. Have you ever thought that before? There's somebody better? Yeah, I thought that. Coming into Destin, I thought that. Like, there's somebody better for this job. God, I'm just not ready. Let me get some things situated first. Anybody been there? That's a good one. I'm going to just get a couple things done. I'll I'll check in with you tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow I'll be ready. Or, Or maybe I need to get my ducks in a row, or my chickens in a row, or my pheasants in a row, or whatever it is that you people put in rows. And then, and only then... Will I be ready to help you? Or, hey, God, you know, if you could just reveal a little bit more of the plan. Because we want to know, don't we? we we're, we're, we're people that want to know things. God, if you could just pull back that curtain, reveal a little bit more of the details, you know, then I will let you know if I can help you out. Excuse after excuse after excuse. What is your excuse today? What's your excuse? What has God asked you to do and you're saying, hey, not yet. I don't have time for that, God. You know what the key for Noah was to stay in step with God? We can can find it in the most favorite part of this reading. Verse 22. Verse 22 says that Noah did everything. Everything exactly as God had commanded him. That's the key. Being obedient, that's why God's favor was extended to Noah and to his family because Noah followed God's instructions exactly as they were given. And that's a great question for us to ask ourselves today. Are we doing all that God has instructed us to do in order to stay in step with him and close to him? And listen, the steps really haven't changed much over the ages and they never will. The first thing that we need to do, church, is we just need to to simply obey God. God says, do this. We say, okay, Lord, I trust you. I have faith in you. I'll do what you've asked me to do, and then just stay close to him. And how do we stay close to God? We stay close to God through prayer. Did you know that prayer is powerful? No? Yeah. Prayer is powerful, folks. We stay connected to God through prayer. We stay connected to God through the reading of his word. And we stay connected to God in worship. That was beautiful here this morning. That time of worship together. 
in times just like this. Listen, God speaks to us. God speaks to us and he tells us what he wants and then he leaves it up to us. Will you obey today what God is instructing you to do? And listen, if he is speaking to you this morning about a specific situation or a specific area in your life, you'll know what it is because, listen, I'm here today to tell you our God is not a God of confusion. He's not a God of confusion. He doesn't deal with gray areas. God is very black and white when he communicates with us. And you know why? Because he wants us to know that we are doing exactly what he has asked us to do. And aren't you glad that he does that? He doesn't leave us guessing and here, try to figure it out on your own. He loves us so much that he sent a savior and he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, so that all who believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. What a loving God. What a loving God. Here's the deal, church. God loves us. He loves his creation, but his heart is grieved because of sin. And his heart is grieved because so many of his people have allowed the sinful culture of our day to come in and distort our view of him to the point that we have stopped following God's instructions. There's a lot of people out there right now. I'm just going to do what I want to do. I'm just going to live my best life today. There's a lot of people who have decided to stop living in the word and start living in the world. We stop trusting him. We stop placing our hope in him. We no longer are sold out to him. We are no longer surrendered to him. We're no longer connected to him. And I, and I want to tell you something. There, there was a wise man and very old and he's not here, so I can say this, but my father-in-law. If anybody knows Marvin, keep this to yourself. But he, he put it this way. He said, the most miserable Christian that you will ever meet is a Christian who is living outside the will of God. The most miserable Christian that you will ever meet is a Christian who is living outside the will of God. You know what God wants from us as his blood-bought, born-again children of a risen king? He wants us, his people, set apart. He wants us holy for his use so that we can go out and be a light in the darkness, that we can be a light in our homes, that we can be a light in our families, that we can keep our families together, that we can keep our churches together, that we can keep our marriages together. Because you know what? Sin desires to destroy all of those things. And so if we decide to let sin in, willfully, it will bring what's promised in the Bible, which is spiritual death. And so as we wrap things up this morning, I want to challenge you. I want to ask you, will you be like Noah? Will you be a crazy Christian? Willing to follow God, willing to follow God's instructions, willing to be obedient to him, even if what he is asking you seems too hard. And perhaps like my son's Lego set that was missing one piece, maybe right now here this morning you are missing the most important piece that will cause all things to work together for your good and for his ultimate glory. Listen, God is able, he is more than able to carry us through if we'll simply trust and obey him. Did you know that there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey? Today is the day to make the decision to love him, to connect with him, and to live out the mission that he has placed on your life. And here's why. 
because you may never get another chance to say yes to him. 